Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, we are going to go over some consignments. I've got Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, a little bit of white shorts, and then I'm also going to show you guys some base set packs, and there was a manufacturer's defect that, that went on with uh, some of those light packs that come from that recent box break that I had, so I want to show that to you guys. But uh, let's jump into this right here. I do have a few theme decks. Typically, I do not take theme decks on consignment, but these come in with some other items. They're a little bit older, and they, these aren't that hard to list, really. These are going to do much better than, like say sun and moon era theme decks in which i don't even think we have theme decks anymore got some real old ones here got zap these are missing the damage counters there light which is the neo destiny do have some more of these world championship decks there's 2004 i want to say we've got another full set of 2004 although some of these have some damage like you can notice this right here that's actually on the inside it's from a um, busted corner right there i don't know how well you guys can see that but yeah i guess like with the plastic uh, busted on the inside got some more decks it's a couple 2005s maybe it's a full set of 2005 because there was three of those right there got some Yu-Gi-Oh! and we have here the right armor the forbidden one this is original lob first edition this is actually glossy if you can see the foil it's like really really smooth and then you have wavy looking at the foil you can kind of see the ripples in there typically the the wavy foil also it almost looks faded uh, people uh, pay up for this one in general over the glossy version and then also something else you can look for you can kind of tell like in the box see those gold letters like it's going to be more centered on the glossy version and more off center on the wavy version i still believe that this is the earlier version i do have an uncut sheet but the main reason is because this foiling type you do not see repeated later on like with metal raiders which is the second set most of metal raiders is is wavy foil and uh, you can actually see wavy foil into subsequent sets and i've heard people say that you can find glossy on later sets but i've never seen glossy like on original lob so that's the only reason that i believe that glossy act was actually first but despite what i think wavy has it seemingly always brought a a premium over the other you can see right there with the monster reborn it is definitely a wavy as well red eyes b dragon is asian english asian english lob first edition on um for Yu-Gi-Oh. this right here is it actually it's got the exact same front like you wouldn't be able to tell that this is asian english from the front unless maybe you have a real keen eye for uh, the different print types kind of like you, you pick up on 1999 2000 base um, without looking at the copyright dates because it's a little bit lighter but on the back side you can see right here that is definitely not the same it's not in english it doesn't say Yu-Gi-Oh. you can't really read it unless you read that language and then right here australian version it has the exact same back so you couldn't tell from there the only way that you can really tell is down here it actually says lob dash and then it'll say this number that's gonna be a lot more visible than that it says a124 so like if this was australian version it would say a070 if anybody in here is listening like an expert on Yu-Gi-Oh and I say something that seems uh, wrong, you're welcome to correct me there. Here's a Karibo. You can see a little bit of, like you can see, it's got that wavy foil that I was talking about. And this is the second set released. LOB was the first set. Got another Karibo. I think the main reasoning behind the glossy versus uh, wavy was something to do with Guy the Dragon Champion only being printed in glossy. But then somebody come up with, a, somebody found a wavy one anyways. So maybe wavy and glossy, I mean, it could have been interchangeable. I mean, it could have just been print facilities. There's Harpy Lady Sisters. There's Metal or Mirror Force. And you can get these in like a faded and off-center type version as well. There's Haman, Lord of Striking Thunder. It's kind of like the Winged Dragon of Ra. This is from uh, Shadow of Infinity. This is Ultimate Rare, first edition. Got a DD Warrior from Tournament Pack 7. I believe there is another Yu-Gi-Oh! card. Maybe, that, maybe it's BGS graded. Here we have some Y Schwartz. You got Catwoman. What else we have, we have here? Yui Kotigawa. Uh, I have no idea if I said that right. These are like signed cards. There's a Nana, a Star, Devaluke. I don't know. Here's some Pokemon. Finally getting around to the Pokemon, right? The Southern Island Mew. Man, you see such a price increase from the 9 to the 10. Go from hundreds to thousands really quickly. There's the Lugia. You got Dark Espeon. There's the Espeon from Aquapolis. Top 16, this is 2005, tough year. This this should bring a pretty pretty decent penny. Semi-finalist, 06. So this is like a higher rank. I'm not sure how what the, what kind of rarity there is for 2006. I know 2005 is pretty tough to come by. 2006 might be might be as well. Got Dark Charmeleon, these are the W stamped. 
from the craft giveaway for Australia. You could get those sealed. That's not that's not all for this consignee. They did have a few more items. Well, I've also got a graded game. <laughs> got a few pre-release cool fables from BGS. There's a right armor of the, of the forbidden one. This is Asian English. You'll be able to see it right there on the back side. Right leg, same thing. These are all Asian English, I believe. There's Fortress Whale, TP7, Change of Heart. Again, Metal Raiders. Let's see if you can pull that. Oh, I can't see it. This is one of my favorite cards. This is, I mean, it's a really powerful card in the game, too. Or it used to be. Who knows now? I don't even know if you can play it. There's Gate Guardian. Used to be like the big dog other than the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. These do have cracks in the case, unfortunately. They don't affect the card. I believe you could get it recased if you wanted to. Time Wizard, another favorite from Metal Raiders. And then we're going to finish off with the left arm. <coughs> Not the forbidden one. Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat. And then the last item on consignment is this Gears of War 2. I don't know anything about this. But I did list it for him. WADA 9.8. And I used uh, some information like the DNSB. It was stated like it was a big thing, so I don't really know. Then I bought this one, another Yu-Gi-Oh card, Jinzo, Pharaoh's Servant, first edition. Man, and this thing is clean. I've been, I almost bought one of these at the Collecticon this last year from um, Peter Petty Potty. I think that, I think it's, it's Petty Potty or Petty Party. Man, I can't even remember. Sorry, man. Um, but man, he's got all kinds of crazy stuff. He's like top, he tops off a lot of, a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh um, PSA registries, but I almost I offered one. I think I offered 4K for it, but he wanted 5K, and um, he was just happy to keep it, you know, at that price. And then I actually won this one for it was like 3,200, 3,300 bucks, something like that. Gixon, guys, if you're not sniping with Gixon, like quit putting your bids in that way. Just put it in through Gixon, like it'll snipe it for you. That way you can it prevents shield bidding, and you can just bid last second. You don't even have to be awake for it. You just stick your bid in there, and it'll bid it for you right at the last second. If everybody did that, nobody'd have to worry about shield bidding. Uh, well, I guess you would if you're using Gixon and you still had no intention to pay, but you don't have to worry about people bidding you up. So like. Like if I had something that was ending at mid, or if somebody had an item I really wanted ending at midnight, I'm not going to stay up for that. So I'm going to end up putting a bid in early, and then somebody who wanted to come through there, through there and do a bunch of string bids just to bid me up, bid it up as high as they could. They could do that. They could bid all the way up, and then they could call in to have it retracted. I get buyers now that they make it really hard for buyers to retract stuff on their own, but I don't retract the bids for the buyers. I put it back on eBay. Uh, I think that if they were going to, they were going to take away that. Um, option for the buyer which i get why they did and i'm kind of happy that they did uh, they still need to be able to call in and um, do the admin removal but most of the people there at ebay aren't trained to know that they can actually remove the bid for the buyer i get notifications all the time about buyers removing their bids so i know that it's still possible but for some reason they always put it back on me and that's just like a pet peeve of mine i got like this set of answers that i have for when people put in false bids but guys if you're not using gixen use it g-i-x-e-n you get a free, you get a few free every month, but basically you just put in the, the item number of the bid and then you forget about it. Gixon will bid it for you as long as the item doesn't come down. But that's what I won this with. Saved me several hundred bucks. Um, this thing is very clean, very nice condition. Got that nice new cert. And it seems to be bring a premium nowadays when it used to be uh, new certs didn't. But very happy to add this to my collection. I've never actually had a Genzo in a tin. All right, now to talk, talk about what I was uh, wanting to mention to you guys earlier. Uh, I was looking at some of these light packs, and there weren't many, but there were some. Look at them. These are straight from a booster box, but you can actually see into the pack a little bit. And I was like, man, are you kidding me? And so actually, this is the worst one. We're going to open it up. Uh, but if you look at it, the crimp, the, it, it, was, it wasn't finished crimped. Like it wasn't, they didn't finish crimping it. You can see right there, like a piece of it's just, it's just not crimped. And so... I thought about just opening them up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually offer these out. If anybody wants to buy these packs, I'll still put my name on it, put everything behind it, uh, put it in a little sleeve, say it was light or whatever. Um, I'll sell them for 200 bucks. If you're interested, just send me an email. I do have a couple of art sets available, but um, yeah, you can see inside of there, even on a few of them, not many actually have a little bit of the top seal. Like this is the worst one. So I want to show it to you guys, but like if you put it in here, you can't really tell. Like, I don't think you'd be able to tell that is because it pinches it but i'm not going to sell this out as regular light packs just because it does look like it's busted it's not the the regular seal is still intact in fact you can follow this you can actually split it 
can see that it stops at the crimp. So the original crimp has not been compromised on this and this. That, that's one thing you, you want to look for when you're looking for reseals. They should not be able to, usually reseals don't split right there at the above the crimp, but these, uh, these have a hole you know in the side so they, they just weren't finished all the way and there's several packs like that but we're going to open this one up and we'll just see what's in there oh and for those of you who are watching the heavy packs i did sell some of those they did technically sell out but there was a guy who created like 50 accounts in moscow and then he had a bunch of stolen credit card information thankfully i was able to catch it because the way he was doing some of the stuff like you there was similar I, well there was exact matches for ip addresses on different accounts and then the um, the regular address matched and then when he caught on when he caught on that i was catching on he changed the address changed the ips but he didn't change the last names and then when I, he figured out i figured that part out he actually made all kinds of new accounts and he was able to get one order through that um that almost tricked me but uh, I googled the address, looked it up, called the phone numbers and stuff, and ended up being a DHL global forwarding service. So, uh, for those of you who did legitimately order heavy packs, those have been shipped out. No packs have been opened yet out of the 13, so I don't know, um, you know, what those. Nobody's reported back to me what they pulled, so I guess every card's still technically in play. I mean, it would be anyway since you can get doubles and triples of the hollows as is, but um, we still have several available. I think I put four on the website. What sucks about that stuff is I did already have one chargeback come through. I got to pay the fees uh, for the transaction and I got to pay a chargeback fee. I, I went ahead and called PayPal, got tried to get out ahead of it, but man, it's like it was over 30,000. No, it was over 20,000 in total that was attempted just from those transactions and I'm not even including the ones from before because uh, there were a lot of failed transactions, but crazy enough, I think like eight packs end up going through or something like that, which is is a headache because they were 800 800 bucks a piece so that's like almost 10 grand in fees uh t fees on 10 grand and now that i put more packs up they could technically go back in and do it but i'm gonna pull the uncommons off the back we're still gonna look at the rare and we'll just see what we have here so we have a jinx porygon pokemon flute should it be pokey flute we got doe duo weedle got a nice charmander no blue dot back there tangela psychic energy grass energy and then we pulled a last now these are light packs i mean i knew that it was going to be non hollow rare but just want to open one up kind of got like a little uh ink blemish you guys probably won't be able to see it right there but it's to the right of the s it's like a, a decent size spot about the size of the s itself this got like a little bit of an orange mixed into it there's what the rares look like. It'd been cool if we pulled like a Beedrill error or War Turtle. I mean, one of these days it's going to happen, right? Maybe. I mean, I want to see it on camera. Even if it's not me, at least I can live it through, live it out through somebody else. But anyways, no, that was long. I started ranting and rambling in there. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you're interested in anything from the consignment, check my eBay. That's where the stuff's going to be listed for sale. If it's not up for sale yet, then you could potentially send me an offer. I did have somebody uh, end up buying out that crystal set early before it did go to auction because they had a high offer but once it's in auction i'm not ending it i'm going to let it go through if there's a major error then you know that might be an exception because that's for the consigning but i want you guys to have confidence that you can go through you can set your bid on gixon and forget it that way once it's up there you guys will be able to bid on the item and uh, you won't have to worry about staying up till you know midnight or whenever it ends i think usually my stuff ends between six and seven eastern standard time uh in the evening so if you're on the or no pacific so if you're on the east coast and you you like to go to bed early like i do uh, you don't have to stay up till nine or ten o'clock and wait for that thing to end but as always i appreciate the support and i hope to see you guys in another video or a live on tuesday night thanks